Salome, the woman, and there's Salome the play. Um, uh, Salome the play, um, some people would know, is uh, written by Oscar Wilde. Uh, Oscar Wilde, of course, is very famous for his uh, comedies. However, this one's a drama. Um, it was inspired by a Bible story. Uh, Salome, who's the who's a princess at the court of uh, Herod. Um, Herod is a obsessed with her, with her young virginal beauty, is desperate to uh, see her dance um, after a feast that he has and uh, and then something terrible comes from that. I play Salome, princess of Judea. Because she's a princess she's spoiled and capricious and gets her own way all the time I think. <laughs> She's intrigued by him um, because he's so strange and he says such weird things that nobody can kind of understand. So I think she's intrigued by him and, and he's also very different to the men that she knows in the court. And um, so, I mean, that sort of piqued her interest. You know, he's a big kind of dirty guy straight out of the desert. So I think she's sort of intrigued by him and possibly a little bit attracted to him. But at the same time, I think she's is confused by her own attraction to him. It's, I don't think she can get a handle on that. I play John the Baptist. Biblical character, everyone kind of knows him. One of the hard things about playing him is he doesn't really go on a journey because he's such an iconic character. Um, all he's about is the salvation of every living thing. He wants you to get to heaven. He doesn't really care whether you like him while he's doing it, but he wants you to get to heaven. play Queen Herodias, so she's the, the wife of Herod, who is actually her, who used to, he used to be her stepbrother, and they got married, so I'm pretty sure she had a lot to do with that, and she's the mother of Salome. Um, she's, she comes across as really angry and resentful in this play, um, and I think, fair enough, because um, her husband is making eyes at his daughter at his daughter-in-law not daughter-in-law his stepdaughter and um, he's propositioning her so I think any mother would have some issues with that <laughs> I actually play multiple characters um, originally it started out that we're supposed to be a guard, but we also become priests and a whole bunch of other characters throughout the course of the play. My character in general for this film, uh, for the play, sorry, is um, very nervous. It's new, he's a neurotic guy. He um, he basically thinks the worst of every single situation. So um, I guess in relation to his character, to the opposing guard, the other guard is um, exuberant. He's Lackadaisical. He doesn't care about what's what's going on. So I'm just like a stark contrast trying to pull him back. What other character would you want to play? If um, yeah. Within this play? Yeah. Mm. The Probably narrator two would be the, <laughs> the, the the best one for me to be honest. So I sort of play the guard slash narrator. Um, I think I'm a several different characters condensed. I think originally there was about seven or eight characters and rather than having seven or eight people coming in for one or two lines, he condensed them all and just made the two characters of the guards. So I sort of die halfway through and then come back on as another character and my character sort of evolves, not in a sense of he goes on a journey himself, but he just turns into different people. Um, oh, I suppose the first challenge is, um, yeah, acting and directing, um, so yeah, yeah, of course, a lot of the scenes I'm not in, I can just sit back and kind of direct and help. The next challenge is really getting the actors to understand what they're saying and really get them to believe in what they're saying. 
so you know there's a reference lots of references to the moon we all have to be seeing this moon in different ways we all have to be sort of seeing the the cistern and feeling the fear and seeing angels coming down and blackbirds beating their giant wings over there so we've got to be really believing what we say just kind of sat down and talked about what we wanted it to look like um, and so from pretty early on I we had the idea of the guards in black with the pants and the belt and that kind of an, uh, an Eastern influence and the king in some kind of robe outfit Salome's outfit um, <laughs> ended up getting changed at the last minute because I couldn't work out a way of making it um, clothes properly <laughs> so yeah this is like the second choice for Salome's outfit with Salome, I, her, well we kind of went with gold because there's a lot of gold references in the script um, and also it looks quite sort of um, of that time, that sort of Persian sort of Cleopatra sort of, you know, vibe going. Um, and but but not too soft there's a harshness to her makeup like her eyebrows are really definite and the um in the eyeliner is really definite so that this kind of highlights a little bit of her evil nature as well because she's a princess but she's not a precious little princess she's she's got a nasty side to her i um yeah i i really enjoyable um as i said it was a bit tough at the start trying to get to rehearse and that kind of thing but it's such a great cast, a great crew. Everyone gets along so well, um, you know, both on stage and off the stage. Um, and you know, it's really great guys and girls to be hanging out with, and and the play itself, it's it's good fun. I mean, it's a bit serious, it's a bit dark, but you know, it, it, it's a good bit of fun to get up there in front of an audience, in front of a crowd, and and you know, sort of say your stuff. So yeah, I, I definitely think it's been a good experience, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think. One of the really fascinating things about plays is you create this this um, synthetic miniature society and you all get really, really close to each other and then when the play ends, when the event that brings you all together ends, you all disperse and you may, um, you may come back for, for future projects, it may even be the same people, but you will never have that moment in time that little synthetic society ever again and they're really beautiful things to kind of think about um they're like little gems to kind of have in, in the back of your memory and i think that i think that's kind of largely what i've got out of um of doing this Played a tree when I was in primary school. Um, I mean, that was that was my breakthrough role, to be honest. <laughs> when I was, I think I was about six years old, and I do remember uh, it was a talent, it was a talent contest, and Mr. Mr. Gregory, I think his name was. Um, I was sitting in homeroom, and the bell had rung. Um, and he came up to me and he actually gave me the, the information that I was the tree. Um, I was ecstatic. My parents were overjoyed. Um, I was upset when I found out I wasn't getting paid for the role. But, you know, that those things happen. You move on and it's led me to where I am today. 